In this project, we are going to try and recreate um, a painting by René Magritte, um, who did these types of sur surrealistic paintings here. Uh, we're going to try and recreate this in Photoshop. Um, the sample that I'm going to create is down here. Sort of very similar in layout and style, and the elements are very close to the original Magritte painting. What is going here? What's going on here actually is there's three elements that we need to pay attention to. One of them is the the beach or the water scene with the beach water in the bottom two third, and then sort of cloud, a uh, nice cloud and sky uh, clouds in the sky at the top here. Then there's the person with a distinctive hat silhouette. And then obviously we have this red curtain here as well. And what really is going on, most people think it's just a cutout in the curtain that reveals whatever would be behind there. But what is really going on here, the area that is covered by the person here, clouds and this little snippet of curtain are copied and reproduced here on top of the curtain actually. So the cloud that we see in this space is actually the cloud that would be behind the hat right here. And the little area of curtain that is covered by the shoulder is repeated here on the right edge as well. So this is what we're going to try and recreate in Photoshop using imagery that we download from Getty Images. And here's a sort of a preview of what I'm going to create here in Photoshop. So let's go to Getty Images first. And um, I'm going to go to my browser. I visited gettyimages.com. I'm at the login screen. I'm going to log in using my faculty ID. You have to use the student login and password that I will give you during class. Uh, we sign in. And you have to do this step, otherwise you will not have access to the collection that the school subscribed to. And you also have to make sure when you click on this search window, there will be a pop down that prompts you or that allows you to select premium access images only. So you definitely have to have this here checked. Otherwise, you will see images that you do not, uh, that you cannot download for free. So by checking this, you will only see images that you can download for free. So I'm going to do a search for beach, for example. Simple searches are good or simple search terms. Searching here just for beach and um, you can narrow the selection down. It gives you 327 pages of beach uh, imagery. Uh, you can go down to either jump into the middle of it so you don't all use the same images. There are lots of images to choose from. Not all of them will be suitable. So take your time and search for an image that really lends itself to what we're trying to accomplish here that has beach and some water in the bottom third and then a nice sky with nice poofy clouds in the top two thirds of the image and you can do the same thing with the person or you can just search for hat for example to get images of people that are wearing a hat and here again we want to have maybe you can search narrow it down to one person sometimes the person wearing a good hat is in a group of um, people we definitely want to have perhaps uh, royalty free editorial images turned off so don't we get all this uh, nice clean simple hat um, images are what we are looking for here and so spend some time looking for good distinctive hat silhouettes this would not be ideal because it's just a plain round head uh, we want something that has a very nice silhouette, but something that is not fussy like this here. This would not be a good candidate for cutting out. So a nice cowboy hat or something like that would be good. So I've already downloaded images and I'm going to upload, open these images in Photoshop. So I have Photoshop open, go to file open. And here I have three images that I've downloaded. Uh, my person, my beach scene that has people here on the right, but I'm okay because I'm only going to use the left half of this image here. And um, curtain that I did not get from 
Getty images, um, but I wanted to have a good example of using something that doesn't have the right color, so I can change the color later on. You need to get all images from Getty, except for the person. The alternative here is an image that you take of yourself wearing a hat. So I'm highlighting all three of these by shift clicking on the, well, clicking on the first and shift clicking on the last, opening them all in Photoshop. If I go to Window, Arrange, Tile, it will show me all three images at the same time in a tiled layout. If I select the beach image and press Command minus, I can zoom out a little bit. So this will be my main image that I will place the other two elements on top of. So I select my curtain, click on the layer for the background and just drag it on top of the other on the beach scene same with my person. I select the person image, click on the background and drag it on top of the beach scene. And it's okay to change color because I'm copying a black and white image onto a color. It asks me to convert the color space and that is okay. I'm not worried about this placement or size just yet. I will get to that in a moment. So I can close out the other two images by clicking on the little X and zoom in by pressing command plus or the equal sign. We'll zoom in so that we can see what's going on here. So I want to name these layers. Um, I do not want any of these default layer names. So this is, you can rename the layer by double clicking on the name itself. So this is my beach scene. And I also want to really use the Getty image identifier here as well, which is 2002-38071-001. So make sure when you use Getty images here, and you should, that you include the image identifier as part of your layer name. I'm only going to do that for the beach scene. I want you to do it for all of the layers that identify the images from Getty. So this is my curtain and this is my person. All right, so I have all three elements on here. The first thing I want to do then is to size the curtain and position it just so. I'm going to move my person over just a little bit by using the move tool. Select the layer that contains the element you want to work with and then the tool to move her over, selecting a curtain. Then I'm going to either edit free transform or use this shortcut key, Command T or Control T on a Windows computer. And I get this sizing frame. I'm going to position it so that it covers the top left right corner here. And I hold down my Shift key to size it without distorting it. Shift, clicking and dragging the corner. And actually I'm going to slightly distort it purposely. Here, this is one instance where you get away with that. You do not want to distort images of people. In this case, we want to purposely distort it slightly so that it will take up half of our frame here. I'm on actually going to actually purposely warp it slightly by switching from my sizing frame free transform to the warp mode by clicking on this icon up here because I want to have a little bit of a drape to the curtain that makes it look like it has just ever so slight of a drape that goes from the top left to the bottom right. Very subtle and you can work with uh, your images so just so that it looks like a natural slight drape to the curtain image here. So I'm happy with the position and size, and I click the checkbox or I hit the Enter key to make this transformation settle in. And I am good with this here. I want to get rid of this white portion here. So I can, different ways to go about it. I'm going to just use my magic wand tool actually, and I think a tolerance of 30 should do it nicely here. I click on the white part, which sh should select all of the area that is white here. 
and I can press the delete key to get rid of this. This is one of the few instances where you will get away with having a destructive editing technique. Normally I will ask you to have non-destructive, but this area is just gone. But that's okay. In this case, now I have a nice clean cutout of the curtain on its own layer. Next up is the person. I select it, command T to size the person, position her, hold down the shift key and drag a corner so that she's positioned just so. Slide rotation, moving the cursor outside the corner and then moving it down. I'm just roughly getting her into the right position. I want the shoulder to slightly overlap the curtain, but not the hat. So I think this will be about in the right position here. Check mark to make it settle in. Now I want to remove the area outside of the person. So I'm using a tool called the Quick Selection tool. This here has the circle with the plus sign. You can change the size of it by pressing the right square bracket or the left square bracket to reduce the size of it. The way this tool works, you click and drag all while holding down the key over the area that you want to keep and Photoshop will do generally a fairly nice job of selecting all the areas that it thinks belong to the same shape that you want to select. So be careful not to go over the edge of the area that you want to select because that will confuse Photoshop. And I have to be careful up here a little bit. So fairly good here. And sizing down a little bit to just kind of clean up the shoulder area ever so slightly here. And hoping that it will not, oh, now it's selected too much. So I hold down the option key to go into subtract mode. You can see the minus and I go in from the outside to remove areas that I don't want to keep until I have a selection that is fairly clean and really nicely outlines the person and the hats and only the area that I want to keep. So this looks reasonable right now. I create the cutout using a layer mask. The selection is active. If I click on the layer mask icon here, it will create a layer mask that will hide everything except for the area that I have selected currently. Clicking here gives me this layer mask and it nicely removed or hid everything that I did not have selected. Option clicking on this layer mask gives you an idea of what it looks like. Everything that is white on the mask means that part is visible of this layer. Everything that is black, that part is hidden. Option clicking on the layer mask itself toggles this view on and off. So this is reasonable right now. I have the shoulder slightly overlapping the curtain, but not the hat. It's not touching the curtain here. So now I want to create a copy of the beach and cloud area that is behind the person. In order to do that, I, have to, I want to load this layer mask as a selection. Command or control clicking on a PC on this layer mask will load this mask as a selection. I select my beach scene and now I can press Command J to duplicate the area that I have selected. So it creates a new layer. I'm going to call it Beach Cutout. And if I option click or on the PC Alt click on this eye icon, it will show me just that layer. So this is simply creating a cutout of the area behind the lady on its own layer. Option click and alt or alt click on the PC again. The speech cutout needs to be on top of the curtain. So I'm dragging the layer above the curtain and then I'm using my move tool to move the speech scene over and I'm holding down the shift key to make sure I get a nice perfectly horizontal move. I don't want to accidentally shift it up or down so holding down the shift key will force it into a perfect horizontal move. So this looks reasonable um, for moving the, the beach scene and clouds from this area on top of the curtain here. What I'm missing is the area of the curtain behind the shoulder. So again I'm loading my selection by command clicking on the mask, 
control clicking on a PC, select the curtain, press command J to again, if I option, click on this eye icon, it shows me just the area that I just selected here. It needs to be on top of the curtain, this on top of this beach part actually, it needs to go up here. I'm using my move tool to move it across and I hold down my shift key and you will see it will perfectly snap into this area here. Just the curtain that gets moved over and fits perfectly into this area here. What I'm missing of course here is the curtain color is not right, it's blue, it's supposed to be red. So I'm going to create a adjustment layer to fix the color. And I select my curtain, I go to adjustments, and this is the hue and saturation layer that I want to use. The hue that I want is at the very edge to make it red, and actually I have to select colorize in my case to colorize it and I also have to dial up the saturation enough until the curtain looks nice and a bright red. I'm not worried about the sky right now. I'll fix that in a moment. I'm just looking at the curtain and I'm fixing the saturation until it has a nice reasonable red color here. Of course I only want to apply it to the curtain part not the rest of it not the other layers below it. In order to do that, you right click on this adjustment layer, right click and then select create clipping mask. That will make this adjustment only apply to the layer directly below it. So this curtain part looks good. The snippet needs to be colorized as well. I can duplicate this very same adjustment layer by clicking and dragging it on top of this little sticky pad icon gives me a perfect duplicate of this adjustment. This one I drag on top of the layer that contains the curtain snippet, which I forgot to name, so I'm doing that right now. Curtain snippet. And again, I need to right click on my adjustment layer and select create clipping mask to make sure this adjustment only applies to the curtain layer directly below it. So now I have the right curtain colors and everything looks pretty good um, layout wise. The last step before I save it is I need to size the image to have exactly a thousand pixels in the horizontal dimension right now. In the long dimension it needs to be exactly a thousand pixels. So the way I do that is I have 1000 px, it's important that you type in the px up here so that it ref wants to size it to 1000 pixels. The default will be inches, so make sure it says 1000 px and then the resolution should be 250. And I'm selecting the area that I want to keep, roughly like so. You can make adjustments here. Depending on your images that you select, you may select a slightly different area so that you have roughly the same layout of the image as the original painting. Once you're happy with that, click on the check mark and it will resize the image like so. And I press Command plus to zoom in a little bit. I verify my file size by going to image, image size, and it should say 1000 in the larger dimension and then resolution 250 here. So this looks good. I save my file. I'm going to use save as so that I can rename it at the same time. So this is my project 1 Magrit. And I'll leave the Getty image file name as part of the file actually. So I need to verify that my format really is Photoshop. Should be the very first selection in this drop down menu for format. Once you've verified that, save to your USB drive or on your home computer. And since I did it earlier, I want to override it actually. So, and maximizing the compa compatibility is okay here. 
and this gives me the file. This is the file that you need to upload to the Dropbox. So, and this pretty much completes the project here. This is my recreated my grid painting. Uh, one quick view here. This is the original of roughly the same layout, although this is almost square. Mine is a little bit more horizontal, but not far off as far as layout, and it certainly uh, conveys the same themes and the uh, concept behind the painting here. So this is it.